Almost any game you have ever played simulates wind in some way. And today we will create our own shader that will make the grass and trees sway in the wind. In my scene I have just some procedurally generated terrain, this is not necessary. In my project I have a noise texture that you can download in the description and I'm using two packs from the asset store. One is for some trees, so lemon trees, and second one is for some stylized foliage, so we can also check links in the description. We'll begin by setting up the shader and the material. So in the project I will just create shader and standard surface shader so that we get the lightning and shadows. I will create new material and assign the shader to it. So material, select the material, go to the shader, to the folder custom and I called it leaves shader. Now as we have some foliage in here, we can easily apply the material to it. So I will just take it and put it to the leaves of the tree. You can see that it looks pretty weird. So we can assign the texture. We already have that in here. So we can just select it and find the leaves texture. And even though we can see that the leaves are correctly assigned to the texture, the transparency is still not working right, so we'll get to the shader. I will set the render type to transparent and add alpha blend. Now as we go back to Unity, you can see the transparency of the leaves is fixed, but it still looks pretty weird. This is because we need to go to the fallback and just change it to transparent cutout vertex slit. Like that. I will also add a variable for the cutoff, so that we have more control over the shadows. This is all that we need to do. Just name it cutoff, add it to the properties and make it float value. Now as we go back to Unity, you can see the shadows are looking alright. We can also play with it a bit more using the alpha cutoff. And the leaves are not looking perfect, which is because we just need to set the render queue to transparent and now everything is all right. We will go back to the shader and I will just clean some stuff. So I will delete all of these commands. I will also delete the instancing. And again, we have some more commands. And because in the surface function, we can't edit positions of the vertices, I will just quickly set up the vertex function. To add the vertex function to your shader, in the pragma, we just need to define it. So it is type vertex and the name is vert and then we can just create void with the name vert and into the parameters I have the app data full in which we can just set position of the vertex like this so v that vertex and set the position but right now we are not sure to which position we should set it so we can just leave it empty and it will be at the position where it is just from the start the shader will be composed out of two parts in the first we'll move all of the leaves simultaneously in the same direction. And in the second part, we'll just apply some noise to all of the leaves so it is a bit more random. And because the amount by how much the tree is going to move is going to depend on the Y position. So the highest point of the tree is going to be moving the most and the lowest point of the tree should not really be moving. So for this, we'll first need to remap the position on the Y axis. For that, I will create two new properties. One will be bend factor, which will be just controlling by how much it is going to be bending. And second one will be just speed of the bending. So we have properties for the bend factor and the speed. Both of them are floats. And I have also defined them in the shader, just as variables here. And in the word function, I will just multiply the Y position of the vertex by the band factor and then I will also multiply it by the sign of time multiplied by the speed so that we get wave-like motion. First I'm just storing the original vertex position into a float free variable. Then we have the float for the remapped position on the y-axis which is just the y position of the vertex multiplied by the band factor and I'm just dividing this by 100 so that it is not too extreme. Then we are multiplying this by the sign of time and time is pre-built in variable in the shader which just gets us the time 
for how long the game has been playing and we multiply this time by the speed to have more control over how quickly it is bending. But this on its own is not going to be doing anything because we have just the y-axis and we want the tree to be moving along the x and z axis. So I will create new vector property for the direction in which the tree should be moving. So this is how we define vector property. We don't really need to have four components, we will just need to have the x and z, but you can't define float2 for a property, so we have to do it using a vector. And now in the vertex function, we can just multiply the remapped position by the direction. So we have a float2 for the directed position, so we are just multiplying the remapped position y by the direction that we'll set. And then I have also created float3 for the final position. And we are taking this from the directed position, but as I said, we don't want the tree to be moving along the y-axis. So I'm taking the x-axis and putting the y-axis to the z. And lastly, I'm assigning the final position of the vertex, which is float4. So we need to take the final position and the fourth component, we can just leave it on zero. While defining the direction, I forgot that we can't use just vector, but instead we should use float4. And then to make sure that the final position is correct, we just need to add the beginning position, which is just the vert position. Now we can go back to Unity and we'll see if everything is working fine. We can see that the tree is still looking the same. And in the material, we are able to access the bend direction and the bend speed and bend factor. And you can see that as I'm playing with the values, the tree is really bending in the direction where I set it which is looking quite nice. And it is also moving forward and back because we are using the sign of time. But right now the tree is changing the position the same way on the lowest point and also on the highest point, which is not what we want. Because as I said, at the highest point, it should be moving the most and at the lowest point, it should not really even be moving. And for this, we can use a really simple formula where we have the remapped position Y we'll just do power of 2 and from this we'll again subtract the remapped position y. So distorted position y is just the remapped position y to the power of 2 minus the remapped position y and then I'm inputting the distorted position y instead of the remapped position y when calculating the directed position. Now you can see that the tree is looking a lot better. So this is all for the first part of the shader. But when we take a look closer to the tree, you can see that these branches, which are holding the leaves, are also moving, but this should not be happening. The branches should still be connected to the main branch. So how can we fix that? The easy way is just to get UV coordinates of these branches. And once I visualize them for you, you will see that right here, I think it is one and one. So we can use just the lerp function to lerp between the original position of the vertex and the distorted position based on the UV coordinates. To visualize the UV coordinates, it is pretty simple. I'm in the surface function. I'm just creating new fixed form named color, which is the same as they have already prepared for us. And the float four is just containing the UV coordinates of the main texture and the alpha is set to one. And here you can see that what I was saying is true. Here is one of the leaves and there is the position X, which is one, one. The Y is on one here. So here it is on zero, zero, which is the exact point where it should be connected to the main branch. And like this, it is working with all of the leaves. So we can go back to the shader, get rid of the UVs visualization. And just to make it a bit clear, I will create new float free where we will just calculate the distorted position. So now the final position will be a lerp between the starting vertex position and the distorted value. And we'll lerp between those two values based on the UV coordinates. Just like that, we are lerping between the vertex position and the distorted position based on the UV coordinates. 
And now we can see that all of these smaller branches are connected to the main branches of the tree. Just like here, they are not really moving in the origin where they should be connected. Now it is starting to look quite nice, but it is not really random if we would add more trees, they would all be looking the same and all of the branches right now are still moving in the same direction. So we will add a bit of noise, for which I will add new texture property, which will be for the noise and also float property for the scale of the noise. So we have a property for the noise texture and for the noise scale, for which I have also created variables. Back in the vertex function, I will need to first calculate the correct UV coordinates, which we will do using the text chord, which are just the texture coordinates inputted by the app data full, multiplied by the noise scale, and again, we will multiply it by the sign of time, so that it is constantly changing. So this is how I'm calculating the new texture coordinates. It is based on the vertex position on the X and Z. This is multiplied by the noise scale and by the sign of time, multiplied by the speed and divided by 10,000, so it is not too extreme. And then I will calculate three noise values for each of the axes. So I'm sampling the noise texture. Here in the vertex function we can't just use the normal command text2d, we have to use the text2d LOD. So I'm inputting the noise texture and the new texture coordinates. From this I'm getting the red channel, because the noise is just black and white, it doesn't matter which channel we take, always it is going to be either 0 or 1 or anything in between. And to make sure that the value is not just 0 or 1, I like to have it between minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5. So I'm just subtracting 0 0.5 from all of that. And then the result, I'm multiplying it by the band factor and dividing by 5. So again, the result is not too extreme. And for the other noises, it is the same. I'm just adding some value to the texture coordinates to make sure that it is a different value of the noise. And lastly, we can just calculate the whole noise value and add it to the LARP function. So calculate the float free for the noise value and just add it to the LARP function to the distorted position. In Unity, don't forget to add the noise texture, so just drag it in here. And now as I play it, you may not be able to notice some great changes, but as I change the noise scale, you will notice that the Movement of the tree is a bit more random, which will definitely look better when you have hundreds of trees in your scene. And one last thing that we'll add to the shader is just the normal texture support. So I will go to the shader and add a property for the normal texture. So we have a property for it. The base value is just bump, which is kind of the purple texture. And I've also added a variable for it. Now we can go to the surf function where we haven't changed anything yet and we can just set the normal, so o.normal and we'll use the command to unpack normal. So we are unpacking it just like that. And this is all for the leaf shader. And now as we apply the normal texture, you can see that it is looking even better. But you don't even have to be using this shader only for trees. You can also use it for grass, bushes, and so on. So we will just need to copy the shader, change the textures if you want, and now we can just drag this new material with a different texture to pretty much anything. So to this small bush for example, and just drag it, and you can see that it is already starting to move. And this is all for this leaves shader tutorial. You can see that the whole scene is starting to look a lot more alive. The shader is really versatile, so you can play around with all of the values. And if you are interested in generating your own procedural terrains, like this one, or creating a water shader, or a mining system, then feel free to check my other tutorials. I hope that this video was useful, if you have any questions, drop them down to the comments, don't forget to like, subscribe, and I will see you in next videos. Bye! Thanks for watching this video till the end. If you are looking for a Unity, C Sharp or Bolt tutor, then I am here for you, so feel free to send me a message to my gmail and take a look at my website for more info. 
I can help you with your personal projects or teach you anything about game development you would want to know. You are welcome.